is LDL cholesterol good for you? Is it bad for you? Does it help you? Does it kill you? You can look at different studies about this and get different opinions about it. But I think it's all very complicated. The purpose of this channel is to simplify it and you know, make it applicable because it is a complex topic, but I think we have easy answers to it, to be honest with you. And it irks me a bit. I, um, I watched a few uh, videos from uh, cardiologists about this and they're still kind of stuck in this whole low fat, you know, lower your cholesterol, only eat the egg whites, don't eat the egg yolk mentality. And in certain cases that might be applicable, but as a general rule, it's a bit antiquated. And many studies have shown now that people with higher LDL levels tend to have a lower all-cause mortality. That is, technically, they are less likely to die of stuff. How is that possible when we're always saying LDL is really bad for you? And I think we need to take it in the context of your general diet as well. So cardiologists are very, very smart people. They went through a lot of extra training that, for example, me as a simple primary care doctor haven't done. So they know the heart really well. They look at an EKG and they can read you a whole story about your heart. And it's beautiful and about, you know, things that happened in the past and, and where your heart is headed and all these kind of things, right? I look at an EKG and I can give you the Cliff's Notes, the very rudimentary stuff. But when it comes to nutrition, by how foods affect your health, then all of us, whether you're a cardiologist, another specialty, uh, have another specialty, or you're a simple primary care doctor like myself, we're all in the same boat. We all had about a handful of lectures on nutrition. It kind of went like, well, here's your food pyramid, learn it, memorize it, and save a life with it. Now let's go on to the thyroid. That's kind of it. So, you know, we didn't have all that in-depth knowledge about nutrition and how it does affect our bodies in that sense. So all of a sudden pretending that just because you're a cardiologist, you know all these things and, and, and you, know, you only listen to what you're preaching is, is a bit weird to me. But so let's look at this LDL cholesterol thing. There are studies that actually show, again, that people with a higher cholesterol, um, or especially with a higher LDL, which we think was technically what we thought of the bad part of the cholesterol, that it might be beneficial for some people. And, then, uh, and also people with a lower LDL cholesterol can die of certain other things. So, it is not as clear cut as saying it's one or the other. In general, we recommend to be on a low carbohydrate diet because what, what does it do? It lowers your intake of sugars, right? So what you can see this reflected as in your cholesterol, remember cholesterol has three parts. You have the HDL, which we always thought of is always the good cholesterol, and that still holds true. You ask anybody, any cardiologist, yes, we want your HDL to be high. So we can all agree on that, so that's good. We want your triglycerides to be low. Your triglycerides are a reflection of your sugar intake, of your carb intake, and not just simple sugars, but it's your bread and your pasta and all these kind of things. So you want that to be low. We all agree on that too. So, so far, so good. But the third one, the LDL now, now that's controversial. So the cardiologists will say, well, I've looked at your total cholesterol and you're over 240 and here's your statin. Again, in some cases, this might be justified, but for, the, for most people, I would argue, well, ask at least the question, well, can you break down with the lipid panel what my individual components of my cholesterol are as a first step, right? And if it turns out that the HDL is very high and your triglycerides are very low and your LDL may become secondary because it might show that you're eating a low carbohydrate diet and then if you eat healthy fats, and we talked about that in another video, and you cut out those bad fats, those vegetable oils, those seed oils, right? And you eat, you know, your butter and your olive oil and your uh, um, uh, coconut oil and then you're doing usually fine. So the, a, the LDL, again, and I mentioned this before, is only a problem if it becomes oxidized. So as this LDL in the presence of sugar, so too many carbohydrates, becomes oxidized and it has a hard time being recognized because it's losing one of its molecules that make it recognizable. And when it cannot be recognized anymore, then you have an issue because it doesn't know where to go. And at that point, that LDL can go to the arteries and cause problems. And that's absolutely true. But again, so you look at individual people and just in generally saying a high LDL predicts that is not quite true. So LDL, the, uh, the particles, you have larger LDL particles and then you have smaller LDL particles. And generally, the smaller and more compact they get, the more dangerous they are. And again, it's usually in the, uh, uh, in the presence of too much sugar that this does happen. So 
Given a statin to everyone that has a high LDL may be a mistake. This is not medical advice, of course. You should always talk to your primary care doctor and possibly your cardiologist to determine this. But I think it's fair at least to ask those questions and say, hey, in my case, do I need to really lower that? And let's say he said, well, you had just recently had a heart attack. And in this case, we're giving you a statin to protect your heart. That is true. But it's a different reason than just saying, I just bluntly want that total cholesterol to come down because I don't think that's a very good reason. Eating healthy fats and eating a low carb diet with that and eating healthy proteins is generally protective of your heart. So vigilantly cutting out fats is not usually a good approach. Also keep in mind that I mentioned this before, there's only a small fraction really of your total cholesterol that comes from the food you eat. Most of it is made by your liver. So dietary patterns play a role. And while many specialists, you know, weigh in on these issues and there's many complicated studies, some saying, hey, you know, all in all, some people with a high uh, uh, LDL might have a longer life expectancy because their all-cause mortality goes down. Some people say, well, but a high LDL can predispose you to heart disease, especially when it's, when it's oxidized. We need to investigate in each person what state you're in. I, so I would say don't panic uh, right away if you have a high cholesterol. Ask the right questions, find out where, that, uh, where those levels fall in. And again, if you have a high HDL, if you have low triglycerides in general, the LDL really becomes secondary. And to prevent the LDL from becoming bad, because remember, LDL is not inherently bad, but it can become bad in the presence of too much sugar, then that's something you can address. If there is a condition where you're genetically making way too much cholesterol, again, these are very individual issues that you might want to address with your cardiologist. But here's another caveat. I mean, just giving statins to everyone that has some issues with their cholesterol might be a big mistake because statins can radically lower that LDL part as well, but they can thereby influence certain um, you know, metabolic issues, for example, in your brain. And we, we know that long-term taking a statin may increase your risk for dementia. And that's not a good thing. It can also cause a decrease in your normal healthy hormones. Testosterone, estrogen, all these kind of things have a background to, uh, sorry, a, a backbone that they're built upon, which comes from cholesterol. So we need cholesterol for all our hormones, for healthy hormone function and for healthy hormone synthesis. So again, I think we need to evaluate this from uh, the aspect of each individual person on how their diet is, how their total cholesterol breaks down and uh, thereby we can make better judgments. Do you need to drastically lower it or not? So just saying LDL is good or LDL is bad is really difficult to do. It's kind of become Schrodinger's cat for all your physicists out there. So it can be good, it can be bad. It is how it behaves and if it's in the presence of a lot of sugar, if it becomes oxidized, if it loses its signaling molecule, but it becomes recognized. And those are things that we can uh, see from blood tests, we have to do more specific blood tests, and that's something maybe you can bring up to your doctor before you and your doctor together make the decision of whether you need to address this with the medication, or if you can say, hey, let me see if I can lower my intake of carbohydrates and I'm eating healthier fats, I'm cutting off my, my bad fats, I'm exercising more, and as I'm losing weight, is that falling into place and I may not need the medication. Again, decision between you and your doctor and your cardiologist but I think you need to have all the facts before they say, well, here's your stat and take that for the rest of your life now. Now, that is something, of course, that the pharma industry would love. But I think you, as a, as a consumer of these medications, should be informed and make good decisions together with your doctor. All right. Thank you.